Hi there, my name is Dean Burry and I'm a composer uh, and I live in Kingston uh, and I'm also an assistant professor at the Dan School of Drama and Music at Queen's University. Um, anyone who follows me on social media knows that uh, I've got a project coming up that I thought that I might bring you along. Um, I uh, am, uh, have written a lot of opera and have written a lot of different types of music, but often music inspired by um, Canadian stories and stories from Canadian history. Um, and through a research uh, funding grant from Queen's University, I have um, the ability to follow up on a project that I've uh, wanted to do for a long time. And I thought maybe uh, in the process I would do a, a few rough and tumble uh, videos uh, just to show you guys what the process is and, and what's going on. So um, Alex Colville uh, is a very famous Canadian painter uh, who, known for a lot of things, also taught at Mount Allison University, um, which was my uh, alma mater for my undergraduate degree uh, in Sackville, New Brunswick. Um, and what really fascinated about me, about me with the idea of Alex Colville is that he was a war artist. So during the Second World War, just basically right after he graduated from university, uh, he was sent overseas to actually uh, t uh, paint pictures of the front line. Was it was what we'd call now embedded um, to take uh, to make pictures basically of um, the Canadian Army and Navy and the service in the Second World War. Um, the whole idea of a war artist to me was kind of fascinating because obviously um, art is a very creative process, war is a very destructive process, so the dichotomy there kind of really all, always interests me and, I, and there was always a project there. So now with this funding from Queens, I'm able to kind of um, start this project and this project actually is going to uh, end up as a large symphonic work um, that I'm going to write and will be premiered by the Kingston Symphony Orchestra in coming seasons. Um, so I'm about to get started on, on this trip, uh, and like I say, I'm, I'm packed. And as part of this trip, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow Alex Colville's path uh, in Europe. Um, so basically trace where he went uh, to the sites that he kind of painted some of his most important pieces um, and try to get a sense basically of those places 75 years later and you know and and kind of the resonance that's still left there what's really really fortunate is that there is this published book called diary of a war artist because of obviously as a serviceman he was re required to keep a report basically a journal of um, of everything that he did and where he went and so i'm able to use this book almost kind of as a road map because it is very much divided up uh in 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 terms of where he actually went for example uh, there's a section here on uh, the time that he spent in Yorkshire, England. So um, the other thing I should mention as well, too, is that um, another wonderful partner that I have with this project is the Canadian War Museum. Meredith, Meredith McLean is the curator of the War Arts Gallery there. Um, and I've had the opportunity to spend some time in Ottawa there um, doing research leading up to that. And some of the images that you'll uh, see kind of in these, little, in these little videos are images that came from um, the collection at the National War Museum. Um, so basically, what I'm planning on doing uh, is to, as I mentioned, follow this course. So basically, later this afternoon, in a couple of hours, I'm going to be flying to London uh, and uh, getting the train up to Sheffield, where I get to meet my very, very good friend, Dave McClellan, who I used to act with, uh, I think, about 25 years ago. We did Little Shop of Horrors together in 1996. Um, I was Seymour and he was Mr. Mushnick. So uh, I haven't seen him for a while, but he coincidentally happens to live very close to the first site I need to go to. So um, I'm going to meet up with Dave, and we are having a tour of RAF Dryfield, which is an abandoned air base um, near the Atlantic coast in Yorkshire. Uh, uh, there's a retired um, British major who's going to give us a tour there uh, and just spend some time in the area. Colville went to Yorkshire basically for two weeks when he first arrived uh, overseas to um, for training. He spent two weeks training with the Royal Army Service Corps. So a lot of the photos from that period or a lot of the paintings from that period are uh, trucks uh, people, uh, you know, learning how to drive trucks up hills, mechanics fixing trucks, um, you know, uh, something very different than what they would f uh, encounter later when they went actually to the front line. Um, from Yorkshire, I'm going back to London and then flying to Toulon in the south of France, which seems kind of a little bit... Um, out of the way compared to the, the tra trajectory that he was normally going on. But basically what happened is that Colville wasn't one of the artists that went with the Canadians for the D-Day landings in Normandy on June 6th. Um, 
And so uh, when these later operations came up in the Mediterranean, something that I'll talk a little bit about more, um, something called Operation Dragoon, which was essentially the Allied landings in the south of France, which happened on August 15th, um, a lot of the artists that had been there for Normandy were busy kind of finishing up the paintings and doing the work. So in fact, Colville was loaned to the Navy uh, and went to the Mediterranean and was involved uh, in some of the, the activity that's happening in Italy. But also most notably, he was at the back of a landing craft um, when uh, Canadian Special Services participated in, uh, Special Forces rather, participated in Operation Dragoon on August 15th uh, uh, near Toulon in the south of France. And I'm actually gonna be in Toulon on the 15th, which is pretty exciting. Um, from Toulon, then I'm going to be flying to Amsterdam. Uh, the next important place I need to get to is Nijmegen, which is in the central, central part of Holland. Um, Colville actually spent several months there uh, in, uh, from about November to February, March of uh, 1944-45, near the end of the war. Um, and the basically, if anyone has seen the movie A Bridge Too Far, or knows anything about um, Operation Market Garden, the bridge at Nijmegen was actually the bridge not too far. It was the bridge in Arnhem that they weren't able to reach. So right in the middle of, uh, of Holland, there's a, a city called Nijmegen. There was a very important bridge over the Vol River there. Uh, and uh, that bridge was taken and the Canadians were tasked with holding it um, for a, a good number of months. Uh, so Colville was there. There's a very famous painting that he created uh, called The Bridge at Nijmegen, one of his kind of better known war paintings. Um, and so I have the opportunity to go there. I'm gonna stop off in, in Amsterdam just before that because I'm going to be going to the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp uh, as the last stop. And um, Anne Frank, of course, uh, died at Bergen-Belsen and um, I'm a big fan of her work and her writing. Uh, did some uh, a book club on her things a couple of years ago when I was with the Canadian Children's Opera Company. And uh, so I wanted to stop off at the Anne Frank house before going to Nijmegen. And then from Nijmegen, travel on to, as I mentioned, the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp in Germany, which um, is uh, is going to be pretty poignant for sure. Um, it's not my first time being at a, at a concentration camp. Uh, a couple of years ago, when I was producing a production of Brunderbar, uh, which we took to Terezin, uh, which is a concentration camp just outside of Prague, um, I had the opportunity to kind of learn a lot about the system there and uh, became really good friends with a, a gentleman named John Freund, who's one of my very dear friends, who was an Auschwitz and Terezin survivor as well, um, and um, really brought a lot of resonance to that. Colville was one of a couple of Canadian artists that were brought to Bergen-Belsen just a, a day or so after the liberation. Um, so obviously what he would have seen there would have been devastating, and I can't think of anything which is going to... Um, better uh, demonstrate that dichotomy between art, um, between creation and destruction than, than those moments. And I've, and I've got the opportunity to meet with some of the, um, some of the people that work there at the, at the camp as well. From there, I head on uh, to Hamburg uh, and then back to Canada. Um, and then, like I say, this, this process um, is really just, the, is just the, the seed and the germination of a larger project which is gonna result in um, a big orchestral work inspired by these four areas uh, that you can look for in the fall of 2020, um, which is actually the 75th anniversary of the end of the Second World War and also the 100th anniversary of the birth of Alex Colville. So the, the anniversaries have linked up really, really nicely. Anyway, uh, I'm, it's, it's, it's a lot to tr be doing in two weeks, I think. I, sometimes I think I'm a little bit nuts, but I'm really, really excited about this kind of, um, this little adventure that I'm going on uh, and the chance to kind of be inspired by these places and, and by the work of uh, such a great artist as well. Um, I'm gonna try to do a video uh, from each location as well too. Uh, if it's a little delayed, uh, then like I say, it'll just be because I'm uh, trying to absorb everything that's around me. But uh, uh, look for part two, which should be after I've visited the airbase in Dreifeld and uh, wish me luck.